Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 today. <clears throat> we'll continue our lessons going through 1 Thessalonians 5. And we want to talk about walking in the light. These believers at Thessalonica were walking in the light. And we want to look at some things in these verses here that will be help, helpful to us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5. Paul says, You're all the children of light and the children of the day. You're not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful, Lord, for the light. We're thankful, Lord, that the gospel came and, Lord, that we were able to make that choice and believe the gospel that Christ died and was buried and raised again. He died on the cross for our sins. We're thankful for that light. And we're also thankful that after we're saved, that you've given us your word to bring light into our souls. And I pray that today we'll be able to see how these uh, believers at Thessalonica walked in the light. And, Lord, that we desire to Walk in that light as well, for we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Going back to this, you look at this here, walking in the light. Uh, and I hope you get this when it talks about the light and the darkness, the day, and all that. These t issues there is about understanding, and we're going to look at just briefly at some of these things that we've already covered, but not a lot of that. Uh, these believers appreciated what God had done for them. I mean, they, you can read the, the, the Scripture here and find how appreciative they were. If they knew that Christ had died for their sins. In verse 10 there, he said, Who died for us, that whether we write, wake or sleep, we should have lived together with Him. So they, they've got an understanding of the Gospel. They knew that Christ had died for, for their sins. They understood the worth, the importance of what Christ had done for them. I mean, you think about the worth that we're rich in Christ today that we're going to have an inheritance one day uh, with the Lord and be there forevermore. Uh, they understood all this. They understood how important it was to reckon, to know that Paul was their, their apostle, the importance of following Paul, the importance of learning the doctrine and rightly dividing the Word. They understood that. They understood the difference between the rapture and the coming of the Lord, the tribulation, the wrath of God and all that. They knew what the difference was with that. Going back in 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, Paul says, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. I mean, you look at that verse, verse 6 there. They're the children of the light. They had an understanding of what was going on. They had perfect knowledge. Verse 2 tells you that. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. They knew perfectly about the day of the Lord that they were not part of that there. And uh, uh, they also, the, the problem, the concern Paul gave them was, he said, verse 6, let us not sleep as do others. <clears throat> others sleep. And that, that is the problem. And that's a problem today. It was a problem during Paul's day. Believers were sleeping. They didn't have that understanding the knowledge and understanding that they should have. And the only way you're going to have knowledge and understanding, you've got to build that doctrine up in your inner man. You've got to have that light. And I just want to give you an example about walking in the light before we go on. Look at it. This is like Ephesians chapter 5. And we'll go back to verse 1. And uh, those believers at Thessalonica, even though Ephesians uh, wasn't written at that time, You'll find that Ephesians is our is advanced doctrine, and you'll find in this that they were living this way. The Thessalonians were. Ephesians chapter five, verse one, Paul says, "Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given Himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor." Notice that there he's talking about walk as dear children. If you look at the last part of verse 1, be that for followers of God, notice, as dear, dear children, and notice verse 2, and walk in love. As dear children, we ought to walk in love. That's how we ought to walk. And you look at that, 
Uh, who is love? Well, God is love. 1 John chapter 4 there in verse 8 tells us that. Uh, I'll read that to you for the sake of reading it. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8 is a good passage to always know and, and read that He is love. And we ought to walk in that love. We ought to walk based on who we are in Christ. And you know, the doctrine is you know it, know who you are in Christ and build that doctrine up in your inner man. You walk in love. You walk in that uh, love, that appreciation, that mental attitude of what God's done for you. And you love Him so that you will walk that way. 1 John chapter uh, uh, 4 there, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Going back to Ephesians over there, he says to walk in love. Uh, be ye fathers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And, and that's how we ought to walk. So walk in Him. He said there in verse 6, Ephesians 5, 6, you ought to walk in love. And in verse 6, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. No, uh, I'm sorry, verse 8. For you were sometimes darkness, but now you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. That's Ephesians 5, 8. Ephesians, we read in verse 5, 2 there. Uh, we ought to walk in love as Christ loved us. In Ephesians 5, 8. We ought to walk as children of light. And the only way you can walk as children of light, you've got to have the doctrine in you. You've got to have knowledge in you. You've got to have understanding in your, in your inner man. It's one thing you've got light when you're saved. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But there's got to be more light once you're saved. That settles the salvation part. Your soul is saved, and when you die, you will go to heaven and be with the Lord. But the other part, we're not dead yet, and we need to, we need to walk as children of light. Walk with that light in us and manifest Christ in our lives. Uh, and how are we going to do that? How are we going to be as children of light? And I mentioned this briefly there. You, how are we going to do it? You've got to let the Word of Christ come in you. Y'all remember the verse we read in Psalm 119, 130? If you don't, you need to mark that verse. We'll go over there and read it again. Psalm 119, and ver uh, verse 130. Psalm 119, 130. We ought to walk as children of light. Well, how are we going to walk as children of light? How are we going to do that? Well, there's a good example here in Psalm 119, 130. And in 130... Uh, the psalm says, The entrance of thy words. See the word words is plural. Give us light. We've got a Bible that's got words in it. We've got a complete Bible. The entrance of thy words give us light. And so what we do by rightly dividing truth from truth, the whole Bible's true, Genesis to Revelation, but we were rightly divide truth because God tells us to through through Paul. And by rightly dividing truth, we find that Paul's our spokesperson. He's our apostle. He's to the Gentiles. And he writes Romans through Philemon. So we divide the light from light, truth from truth. And the light's in Romans through Philemon for us. And the, the, there's light throughout the Bible for our, for our examples. And this is one Bible example here. The entrance of thy words giveth light. And that's important that we understand that and see that. When you think about the entrance, the act of, of entering something, what's, what's the Word going to enter? It's going to enter our souls, our inner man. You take the Word of God, you read it, you study it, you've got it in your mind, your mind transfers it down to your soul, the soul has a mind, and you store up sound doctrine in your soul. The entrance of thy words giveth light. So God is light. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, we'll read that verse. God is light. 1 John 1, 5. The Bible says this then is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. In God. God's light. God's love. So we ought to walk in that light based on who we are in Christ. Based on that agape love. We love Him. We've got that mental attitude love. We want to have the, 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 the mind of Christ. We want to think like He does and we do because we love Him. Not because we're under a, a system that's making us do a law or performance system, but we're under a grace system. And uh, God is light. And the thing about God is light. His words gives light. 
And you think about the more you take in the word rightly divided, the more light you're going to have in your inner man. And the more light you have in your inner man, guess what? It's going to be re revealed, manifest in your flesh. As you walk around in this life, man's going to be able to see that light in you. They'll see Christ in you, the, the, the doctrine that, that's in you. And that, that's what we want to do, walk in light. You've got the Word of God, you read the Word of God, you study the Word of God, you rightly divide it. Believe what you read. And put that light in, in your inner man. I mean, you walk, so we walk in love, we walk in light. Ephesians 5, 15, here's another one. Ephesians 5, 16, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise there. We ought to walk circumspectly there, not as fools. You, know, you, you need to be careful. You need to evaluate the situation uh, that we're in. Be on, be on guard. Be careful. And you watch. And the only way that you walk circumspectly, you evaluate the situation. How do we evaluate things? Based on sound doctrine. God is light. The entrance of thy words giveth light. You, you have, should have that sound doctrine in your inner man. And that's how that you walk circumspectly. It, because of the doctrine, you can walk circumspectly and you can be watchful, you can be careful, you can evaluate things that come up in your life based on sound doctrine written in Romans 2, 5, And that's what we've got to do. The rest of the Bible is for our learning. We, there's light throughout the Bible. We can use examples. Uh, like I shared, Liz, we were talking a while ago about a verse uh, over in Proverbs. That's a good example that Liz shared with me on that verse. We can use that. That's an example. That's not over in Romans 2, 5, Laman, but it doesn't contradict doctrine over there. So therefore, you can use that. As long as it doesn't contradict and go contrary to the sound doctrine uh, that we know. So walk circumspectly. And so, you know, you think about these believers at Thessalonica. They were walking in the, in the light. In love. They were walking in the light. And they had to walk circumspectly because it was difficult for them at Thessalonica. They came out, they were saved out of an ungodly situation over there. And with all that there. And then going back now to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, we started reading that passage there. But I want to share those things with you about walking. Walking in the light is a key thing for us as believers today. Walk in love. God loved, He loved us. And that's to send His Son and die for us. We need to, that agape love in us, that mental attitude love that we do based on we get the doctrine built up in our inner man. We're walking in love. We're walking in the light with the Word of God shining in. It's in our souls. And we're going to walk circumspectly. We're going to be careful. We're going to be watchful. We're going to evaluate everything we come up against with sound doctrine. That's how we've got to do it. And with all that, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, Be ye therefore, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now there's a lot of things about this here when you, when you look at this. You might not think there's much here, but uh, followers, it does not say imitators. It says followers. That's what the King James Bible says. And, and that's, what, that's what the truth is. You know who the greatest imitator of all is? Satan himself. Satan wants the word changed from followers to imitators. And you can't do that. We're not imitators. We're followers. And that's what the Bible says. Now we're going to come back there, but I'm going to read this verse to you. Hold your place there and go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to go back to Ephesians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 7. Paul says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. Now, we, we've gone over this enough. A lot of believers are in this verse today. We're living in a time that a lot of believers are living. It's like this verse is Paul's warning there. He's saying, for the, talking about for the, making a statement, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the, light, in the night. And we're faced with a lot of that today. A lot of believers all over the world are living in, in darkness. They're saved, but the light's not in them. And you ought to know by now what light is. Light's that doctrine. It's the Word of God you put in your inner man. And you want the light. God is light. Thy words giveth light. That's how you get the light. 
And uh, we want that light in our inner man. And there's so many believers in the world today, they don't, they're, they're guilty. Verse 7, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. So many are sleeping today. So many believers cannot function based on who they are in Christ because of lack of doctrine in their souls. And therefore, if there's not doctrine in their souls, if that light's not in their inner man, what's in there? Darkness. There's, they may be saved, but that's all they've got. Uh, they're not, and if they're like that, they can't live based on who they are in Christ. You know how they live every day? They walk in the flesh every day. That's what they do. They're, they're in that flesh. They like emotions. They like the charismatic part about that. That's why that's grown leaps and bounds starting in the early 60s. The charismatic, charismatics came. I, I, I was caught up in that when I got saved and spent one year in that. Then you go from there to legalism. And that's what I spent time in. I've shared that with you. And all that's going contrary to sound doctrine. I'm not under the law. I'm saved by grace. I live by grace. That's the only way that we can live. And if we're going to live by grace, you've got to follow the Apostle Paul in Romans 6, 5, Lehman. If you don't do that, then you're going to go back. It's all flesh. When you get in that flesh, it's law. It's all performance based. And there, there's nothing right. There's nothing good about that. You know, the light's gone out. The light went out when you were saved. God is light. The gospel, the light of the gospel came. You heard the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. And once you heard the gospel, you had a choice to make. Am I going to believe it or am I going to reject it? And the ones of you here believed it, and I believed it, and therefore light came in. We've got light, but that's not all of it. After you're saved, you've got to do something with that, and all of you know this. Uh, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Now, I'm not going to spend time on this, but somebody that may listen on the internet, the internet may not know this. After you're saved, you, there, there's two things in this 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4, Paul says, who will have all men to be saved. Well, that's what happened when we got, we got saved. The, light, the gospel light came the death, burial, and resurrection, we heard it and we made that choice to believe it and we were saved. There's a comma there. Then there's something else that I've got to do and to come in the knowledge of the truth. And that's, that's what, uh, I, it took me a while to do that, to come in the knowledge of the truth. It took you a while to do that because we were caught up, it doesn't matter, in a charismatic group or in a law uh, teaching church or a traditional church that way or whatever circumstances you were in, you had a lot of baggage there that shouldn't be there. You had heard a lot of things already since you had been saved that, you, that wasn't right. It was bad doctrine. And it, because it wasn't rightly divided, and therefore you didn't have light in your soul, and you couldn't walk as children of light like you should because you didn't know how to walk. You are walking trying to do the best you could and get by with the best you could and be a good moral person. you go to church and if the, if, the, if the pastor said you're going to have to give so much to an offer plate, well, you, you'd want to give it if you had it because you didn't want nothing to happen to you. That's performance. That's not grace. Grace, you know, it's not a matter of how much you give. It's what you prosper. If you want to give it, fine. If you don't want to give it, fine. It's still grace. But coming out of all that, there's a lot of baggage. And you know, you don't get rid of that baggage overnight. You'll, there'll be things in your life that's going to go through until you die and go on to be the Lord. It shouldn't be there that you got taught wrong. We, Connie and I were sharing this this week. Praying is one of the things. You have to watch out for that because people don't want to change. Well, there's Pauline praying or you can go to the kingdom praying or law praying, whatever, but grace is how you need to pray. You need to learn to pray that way and, and, and accept that and say, well, I'm wrong the Bible's right, so I'm going I'm to make a change. And I'm going to pray, do the grace praying. But then, you know, you look at that there, and we ought to live, you're saved with grace, you ought to live with grace. Colossians 2, 6 is one of the verses that, that talks about that. But going back to Ephesians chapter 5, the, the group at Thessalonica were, they were saints, they loved the Lord, they were walking in, in love, 
They had a love for the Lord. They had a love for one another. They also they were walking in the, in the light because they received the, the Word that Paul had taught them. They stored it up in their soul. They were, they were walking circumspectly. They had to. The times that they were living in at that time, they had to be careful. They had to watch the things that were, that were going on as well. But here's a, here's a verse, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. I mentioned to you a minute ago, therefore, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Well, that word followers, again, is not imitators. Don't never let anybody tell you that's what that word means there, because that's not it. If you get the American Standard Version, all, all these new Bibles, even the New King James Version says the, the imitators of God. Even the New King James. It says imitators. And that's what they put in there. And that's sad to, to know that, that, that it's done. And I, this Greek word, the Greek word for follower is mimetes, M-I-M-E-T-E-S. And we get our word mimic from that. And uh, the word mimograph, it's the copy machine comes from it. New Bibles translate the word imitator. And that's not right. It should be followers. Uh, what's the problem with saying imitators of God there in that verse? What would be the problem? You can't do it. Pardon? You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't be imitators of God uh, in that way. And in, an imitation is counterfeit. In general speaking, imitation. You know, you always people. You hear people imitate their teacher or the preacher. You know. You wouldn't do it in front of me, so you do it behind my back. <laughs> I'm just carrying on. But that's a fact. I mean, it's just the way it is, imitating and going on. But context determines meaning. If you want to be a follower of God as dear children, how are you going to follow Him? The very next verse. And walk at, in love as Christ also has loved us. You know, and walk in love, well, when you walk, you follow somebody. And that's, how, that's what you got to do. You got to walk. To follow, to follow God, we know we've got to go through the Apostle Paul, and I'm going to share that with you here in a second. You got to walk. You got to walk. That's why I brought walk out. You got to walk in love. You got to walk in the light. You got to walk circumspect. And I hope that makes sense to you there when you see that. We're not imitating God unless you're a counterfeit. And Satan is that counterfeit. Kind of be ye therefore followers of God in verse 1. That's, that's what it should be. The greatest imitator of the Bible is, is Satan. You know who the greatest follower of Jesus Christ in the Bible is? Paul, Paul himself. He's the greatest follower. Here's some verses I'd like to share with you. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. You cannot be a follower unless you let the light, the entrance of thy words give us light. You've got to let the light come in. You've got to let the words, the Bible, come into your inner man. That's the light. And you can't be a follower. You, you cannot walk in the light and please God if, you're not, if you don't have that doctrine in you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4 there, verse 16. Paul says, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers, of me. And why could he say that? Because he's our apostle. And we ought to follow him. He writes 13 letters to us. Romans through 13, Philemon. Be ye followers of me. And you look at that word followers there in that verse. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. What does the new Bible say? They say they take out followers and put imitators. That's what they do. I mean, you can look it up for yourself. And why do we follow Paul? Romans 11, 13, and he's the apostle of the Gentiles. That's why we follow him. That's why we walk in the doctrine. That's why we let the doctrine come in our inner man. Let the entrance of our words give us light. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Colossians 3, 16. Be strengthened by the power of his might, Ephesians 3, 16. If you don't put the doctrine in you, you can't be strengthened. And Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ for strengthen me. You can, but you've got to have the doctrine in you to do it. And if you don't have the doctrine, you don't have the strength. And if you don't have the strength, you're not going to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. 
And so it, it's that simple there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, here's the other verse that Paul gives, gives us. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Be ye, there, be ye followers of me, even as I as also I am of Christ. I mean, Paul followed Christ, be followers of me. And he's our apostle. And let me give you this one. We, a lot of times we don't use this, so this is a good verse. Look at Philippians chapter 3. This is advanced doctrine. you got 1 Corinthians there. That doctrine, that's a commentary off of Romans. Well, you got advanced doctrine in Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And uh, look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17. See, it makes sense, all the sense in the world. Now, Romans is your, is your doctrine book. And then you got the commentaries, 1 2 Corinthians and Galatians. And all that deals with the cross work of Christ. Well, you learn that and you build that up in you, your inner man, you understand you're justified. Uh, by, it, you're justified, you're declared righteous, and you go through all that. But then you get advanced doctrine, was written later, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, that we're heaven people. And all, and you learn in Philippians chapter 3, there, verse 17. Paul says, Brethren, that's saved, be followers to get followers together of me. And mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. I mean, walk, walk like you belong in the heavens. That's how y'all walk. And you know, there's people that walk that way. There's people that are follow, brethren, be followers of me, and mark them which walk so walk as you have us have us for an example. There's people that walk that way. There's saints that walk that way. When we have Bible conferences, you see the saints come in and you see people that are walking that way, that love the Lord, that love His Word, that want to write a divide and put that doctrine in their inner man, and that they manifest Christ in their lives. You see that. And it blesses my soul to see people like that. And it refreshes me and builds me up uh, that way. But you mark people that walk like Paul walked. And you know, I, I mark the ones that go contrary to Paul too. That's what Paul tells us. And we won't go there today. Uh, but notice that you read verse 17. Brethren, we fall together in me and mark them which walk so you have us for an example. Well, he, he gives you the parentheses in verses 18 and 19. And they're there for a reason. There's a lot of information there to tell you about. About the ones that many walk with him. I've told you often and tell you even weeping. They're the enemies of the cross. So they don't walk that way. 18 and 19. But you look at verse 17 and put that with verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. That's our lifestyle right there in heaven. From whence we also we look for the Savior, the, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you think about our manner of walking, our living. It's in heaven. That's how we ought to live, like uh, we're heavenly people. We live and, and walk like saints that belong in heaven, not this earth. We're just acts of passing through here. Uh, and we're thankful to see other th saints. Like I said, I mean, it just, I rejoice being around other saints that love the Lord. That's why I'm thankful to be here every, every service with you. And I don't like to even miss any because I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the ones that we go off and see others that are like you, that are saints that love the Lord, love His Word and all. And that just refreshes me and encourages me and edifies me. So, you know, the greatest follower in the, in the Bible is, is Paul. Look at now, going back to 1 Thessalonians, I've said all that to you. I know we're not going too fast with it, but 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6 about these brethren, these saints. And you'll find 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. Another verse about followers. And ye become followers of us and of the Lord. Now who would be us? Well, verse 1 there talks about Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. And Paul said, you became followers of us and of the Lord. You know, comma there, and of the Lord. People want to have a chance to say, well, you just think Paul is everything. You ought to follow him and leave the Lord out. That's not what the verse says. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6. It says you became followers of us and the Lord. If you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to have to follow Paul's teaching. And that's just the way the Lord laid that out. There's no apology for it. That's the Scriptures, and that's what, man, what believers must do if, if, if they're going to follow. If they're going to follow, if they're going to walk in, the, in love and walk in, 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 the, in the light, if they're going to walk circumspectly, they're going to have to follow Paul. They're going to have to follow his teaching. And Romans 2, 5, and they can't do it any other way. Look at 2 Thessalonians. Here's one more. 
about these believers. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 9. Saint Thess uh, Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 9. Not because we have not power, but to make our, ourselves an example unto you to follow us. You see that? And they follow. It's not about imitators. They're not trying to imitate Paul. They're following us. They're following the doctrine that Paul's preached and taught them. And, and that's what you have to do. Now, these believers were following Paul. Now, I, I want you to, what time we've got left, and we'll go about 10, 10 more minutes of this. There's some things about these believers in Thessalonica I want you to look at. Go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And this is this this will bless your heart. We've gone over it, but sometimes you can go over things and miss verses. Things that you shouldn't miss, but we do, and I'm guilty of that myself. Uh, verse 4, but ye brethren, talking about the Thessalonica brethren, are saved, are not in darkness, that that day should not overtake you as a thief. First of all, there they're not in darkness. And uh, they had understanding. Because they had the light in their inner man. They understood. They had the understanding. And that's why if you get the light right here in this chapter, it's that understanding. It's in that inner man. They had that. Because they have been taught by Paul. And also in verse 5, another, the second thing, you're all the children of light. And note said, in the children of the day, we're not of the night nor of darkness. They were the children of light. And why were the children of light? They let the word of Christ dwell in them richly. They were strengthened by the power of His might, by the word of God. The, the word, the entrance of Thy words giveth light, and uh, that's it, that's exactly what they had. Verse six. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. The indication is, no doubt, they were not sleeping. If you sleep, you can't function, and that's what a lot of believers today are doing. They're asleep spiritually. They're not functioning based on who they are in Christ. Uh, yes, they're saved, and, but yet they're not functioning on um, um, based on who they are in Christ. You know, there's many in the body of Christ. We read that in Romans last week. So, you know, people want to have a tendency to say, well, you think you're the only one saved. No, there's many saved. But there's many that do not have the light in their inner man. Uh, for for, for different reasons as well. Many are like that. Uh, they also in verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. They were not drunken. And we're not talking about alcohol here. They were not deceived by the religious system in the world at that time. They weren't drunk. They were sober. They were alert. They had understanding. They had the light. They had the doctrine in their man, and they knew who they were in Christ. And so they, they were not drunk, and it's not physical drunkenness. And many believers today are being deceived, have been deceived, and will be deceived. And you know what happens when you get deceived? The light goes out. You're, you're saved, but you don't have any other light in your soul. There's darkness in that inner man because you've been deceived. And you look back at your life and you'll see as you read the Scriptures, I see it plainer. Every day I read, I see how deceived I was back in the 70s. Back in the 80s. Or, well, early 70s. And then I started, I got some light in, the, in the, about the middle of the 70s. And yet, going on up, you, get, you think you, you've got all you need probably. You get deceived, you get puffed up. Knowledge puffs you up. And you need, you need to realize that you need, you're constantly learning until you go on to be of the Lord. You're building up that doctrine in you. But they were, they were not drunk. And uh, when you think about uh, the light had gone out of them, let me give you an example. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. There's believers today, the light's gone out, just like there was it. The believers at Thessalonica saw others that were sleeping. Paul saw others that were sleeping. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Notice about the gospel here. 
But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. You know what the gospel of Christ is? It's the light of the glorious gospel. You see that? You, you think about the, the gospel, you think about light. It's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And you think about uh, living uh, today. We live with the light. I keep going back to Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. Colossians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And that's the only way you're going to have light in your, in your inner man. The gospel gives you light. You're saved by believing the gospel. But after you're saved, you've got to read the Word of God on your own and study and rightly divide the Word and come to the knowledge of the truth. Get that light. You've got to do that yourself. And God's provided the, His Word, the Spirit of God in us to teach us, and the Holy Spirit will teach you if you'll believe what you read. And that's the problem man's faced with today. You know, Satan's the God of this world there. You see that? Reading the verse, verse 4 there, uh, where do we find gods at today? We find gods in temples and don't leave out churches. That's where you find gods. There's gods in churches today. There's, there's things that, that shouldn't be. Satan's sphere of operation today is religion. He's got his, that religious system today. He's the God of this world. And he, he has that. Ephesians 2 2 says he's the prince of the power of the air. And also, John 12 31, he's the prince of this world. I mean, you think about all that. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's the prince of this world. He's the God of this world. He's got his own religious system. He's got, Satan has a world system and he has a, he's got a religious system. Well, what, what is Satan's religious system designed to do today? It's to deceive, and he'll deceive by trying to hide Pauline doctrine from all believers. That's what he. Not only does he deceive, and send people to hell, but he deceives, and after people are saved, he can't touch your soul, but he can keep you from knowing the truth, coming to know the truth, living based on who you are in Christ, and all that. And he's trying to hide Pauline doctrine from believers. That's what he's doing. And he's, he's been doing that for a long period of time. You, you think about, he doesn't, want, he doesn't want people to acknowledge that the truth was committed to Paul for us. He doesn't want people to, to see the mystery program, Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles, the mystery is revealed, and he's, he, wants, he wants to hide the truth from believers, so that therefore, by hiding the truth, a believer doesn't have the truth, they don't have the light in their inner man, if they don't have the light in the inner man, they're asleep, they're in darkness, and therefore they're, they're not functioning based on who they are in Christ. They're not doing nothing. It's just that simple. He deceives a man for salvation. Then if, if he can't do that, he'll deceive you about rather dividing the word and coming to the knowledge of the truth. It all goes hand in hand there. And that's why, going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, that's, this is why Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 7. Paul says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. If you look at that drunken there, if you'll go over to Revelation to save time, because there are times get, if you'll go to Revelation 17, we might as well read the verse, uh, drunken in the, in the night. If somebody's drunken, they're deceived. Well, what's going to happen in the tribulation period? The Antichrist is going to use this religious system that's in the world today, and, it, and he's going to use that to deceive. You'll find in Revelation 17, 2, it talks about in verse 2 there, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Well, let me read verse 1. Revelation 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Unto me come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth are committed fornication, and the inhabitation of the earth have been made drunk. No such the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with what? With the wine of her fornication. And that, you can read on down through there, 
And that, that's a religious system that the Antichrist is going to ride in on in power. He's going to use that power. And that religious system, you think about it, begins with Cain back in Genesis. And that's the starting point of it. You go to Revelation, Genesis chapter 11 over there. What have you got over there in Genesis chapter 11, verse 4? You got bad news. That's when God gave up on the Gentiles. So turn over there to Genesis 11 and verse 4 uh, quickly and we'll read that. Genesis 11 and verse 4. <coughs> Notice it says in verse 1, the whole earth was of one language, one language and of one speech. Well, what did uh, the Lord told Noah and his sons to do? He said, go out and replenish the whole earth. Genesis 9, they wasn't doing that. Here they are here, verse 4, and they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower. That tower, that, that's the religion there. That's the high place. That's the ungodliness. Whose top may reach into heaven. God didn't tell them to go to heaven. God told them to replenish the earth. He didn't tell them to go to heaven there. And they got their own religious system there. You know who the leader behind this was in Genesis 11? Nimrod. Look at Genesis chapter 10. And now let's read one verse. It's 10, Genesis 10, 8, 9, and 10. But you look at verse 10. Notice that in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kelah in the land of Shinar. You've got the kingdom was Babel there. And you think about the, the Tower of Babel or Babel there. You think about that. What's that known for? That's known for Baal worship. And that. Uh, Go to one more and we're done. Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2. And verses 11 through 13. Judges chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. I mean, you got this, the, the religious system started all the way back in Genesis. And by the way, it didn't stop with Israel. It's here today in, in the body of Christ. In this dispensation of grace. And that's, that's a big problem. And yet, Christians, uh, they're, they don't recognize that. They're asleep. They're drunk. Well, in Judges chapter 2, verse 11, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. That's Baal. Notice that. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were found round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. You know what Baal is there? That's the male deity in the worship. You think about the Ashtaroth, that's a, that's a female uh, deity there. You've got the, is a female deity. That's a, you're talking about the Queen of Heaven? You can look at all that tied together. And what you've got, the Gentiles were given over to all this. Genesis 11 there, Nimrod started. And you think about Baal worship, it's all it's going all the way even now. It'll go on after we're gone, it'll go in that tribulation period. Antichrist comes in on that religious system. And everything you see about churches and buildings and structure is not right. And I, I'm, I'm not going to go into all that today, time-wise, but understand, Baal worship is strong. And yet, we've got people today are asleep. They're sleeping, they're drunk. And Paul said, 1 Thessalonians 5, 7, drunken in the night. People deceive, do it in the dark. You think about that. Not in the light of the teaching of God's Word. I mean, they're in the dark, and they're not doing it in the light of the teaching of God's Word. If they had God's Word in them, they wouldn't do it. But they are doing it. And the whole thing behind it all, walking in the light, these believers at Thessalonica appreciated what God had done for them. They were thankful. They knew they were in Christ. They loved the Lord. Uh, they were thankful for the Apostle Paul, for the doctrine, and they were just rejoicing based on who they are, or, are in Christ, and they were looking for that blessed hope. And that's what we're looking for today.